Welcome to Headlines at Mint. Let me give you a quick brief on the biggest events and developments expected to make news this Thursday. Almost two weeks after 16 legislators resigned from the Karnataka Assembly, the Congress-JDS coalition will face a floor test on Thursday. This comes a day after the Supreme Court passed an interim order on the petitions of a few of the rebel leaders seeking direction to the Speaker to accept their resignations. The top court, in a mixed decision for the state government, said that while no time frame could be specified for the Speaker to take a decision, rebel MLAs can't be forced to attend the Assembly session for the trust vote. This essentially means that legislators are not under any compulsion to adhere to a whip issued by the Congress-JDS combined, putting the ruling coalition on a sticky wicket. The three-member mediation panel set up by the Apex Court to try and find an amicable solution to the Ram Janmabhumi Babri Masjid dispute is set to file its report on Thursday. The panel is led by retired Supreme Court Judge FMI Kalifullah and consists of spiritualist Sri Sri Ravi Shankar and senior advocate Sri Ram Panchu. The top court will then decide whether to begin daily hearings in case the panel didn't make adequate headway. The mediation team was set up in March this year and granted an extension in May. The government will launch the sixth tranche of exchange-traded fund of central public sector enterprises on Thursday. These will include ONGC, NTPC, Coal India, IOC, Rural Electrification Corporation, Power Finance Corporation, Bharat Electronics, Oil India, NBCC India, NLC India and SJVN. The centre hopes to raise Rs 10,000 crore from the issue. The government raised around Rs 38,000 crore from the previous five tranches. What may make this issue lucrative is that government's decision in Budget 2019 to give tax benefits to investors choosing CPSE ETF. In what comes as bad news for companies in the fast-moving consumer goods sector, research agency Nielsen lowered growth forecast for the segment to 9-10% to in calendar year 2019. Nielsen's forecast and the Union Cabinet's decision to amend the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code is expected to impact markets on Thursday. This comes a day after the BSE Sensex closed 85 points higher on the back of a gain in bank and IT stocks. The NSE Nifty ended almost 30 points higher on Wednesday. The recommendations of the Bimal Jalan Committee are also likely to influence the markets. The stocks to watch out for on Thursday include Wipro, which reported a 12.6% year-on-year jump in Q1 profits, and Yes Bank, whose first quarter net profit dropped 90.97%. Mindtree also reported a 41% decline in consolidated net profit. Now let's take a look at what else has been making news across India and the world. Three years after Pakistan captured Kulbushan Jadav, the International Court of Justice finally pronounced its judgment on India's petition challenging the death penalty handed to the Indian citizen by Pakistan. The World Court, situated in The Hague in the Netherlands, ordered a stay on Jadav's execution by Pakistan and ordered that India be allowed consular access. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, commenting on the verdict, said that truth and justice had prevailed. Mastermind of the 2008 Mumbai terror attack and Jamaat Uddawa chief Hafiz Saeed was taken into custody by Pakistani authorities on Wednesday, according to Pakistani media reports. Saeed was reportedly arrested by the counter-terrorism department while travelling from Gujranwala to Lahore for a hearing at an anti-terrorism court. The arrest comes just two days after the designated global terrorist and his aides secured bail in connection with a case of alleged illegal use of land for a seminary. Pakistani authorities had also announced filing of terror financing cases against Saeed, a move described as a cosmetic step by the Indian government. The Union Cabinet on Wednesday cleared seven amendments to one of Modi government's biggest reforms in the corporate sector, the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Court. The government will now seek Parliament's approval for the amendments. These include an increase in the time frame for bankruptcy resolution from the current 270 days to 330 days. The suggested alteration also clarifies the rights of financial and operational creditors who opposes a rescue plan. The proposal is to pay them as per the hierarchy specified in the court. The panel set up by the Reserve Bank of India to review the central bank's economic capital framework held its last meeting on Wednesday. The panel, headed by former RBI Governor 
Bimal Jalan has decided to recommend transfer of excess reserves to a government in a staggered manner over a period of three to five years based on a predetermined formula. The 2019 Brand Finance India 100 report has named Tata as India's most valuable brand ahead of the government-owned Life Insurance Corporation of India. According to the report, Tata's brand value reached $19.6 billion compared to LIC's $7.3 billion and Infosys, which is at number three with $6.5 billion. In a major move for inclusion in the workspace, Media Behemoth, Star India has decided to extend many benefits to its LGBT staff. These include health insurance to partners, maternity and paternity, IVF, surrogacy and adoption leave. With this decision, Star joins the ranks of companies like Godrej Group, Accenture and IBM which gave health cover to same-sex partners of employees. In September 2018, the Supreme Court had decriminalized consensual homosexual intercourse. That's all for now. Stay tuned tomorrow for Friday's edition of Headlines at Mint.